Hi everyone, I'm going to be showing you today how to install a Pro Sport uh, wideband air fuel ratio gauge in your car or truck. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be going through pretty much a whole uh, install process for one of these. Um, this kit includes everything you need, it includes a Bosch wideband sensor, O2 sensor, the wiring harness for it, gauge pod, and a module for all that. Uh, this is the uh, digital. Uh, wideband O2, so it'll give me numbers through there, and uh, I'll show you the end result there. And I am going to be installing it in my 2008 Mustang GT. Uh, here shortly, it's going to be supercharged, so I definitely need to know the uh, air to fuel ratios. It'll help with tuning and uh, keeping it safe, so I'm going to go ahead and show you the process here. Alright, so uh, with the kit, it comes with these instructions. Uh, reading through them, they're actually not the most uh, thorough uh, of instructions. They don't exactly have like kind of like a step-by-step -step thing on the back. They do have uh, just some stuff here. Uh, you can pause the video and read through, but it doesn't necessarily tell you how to get it installed. They do have uh, a diagram here. So the wideband O2 into your exhaust, the harness. Um, yeah, so this is the wideband uh, sensor. So it'll go in there, it'll connect with this harness right there into the module right here. And this will sit somewhere inside your cabin, wherever you want to put it, glove box, under the uh, steering wheel, anywhere. And then um, we have a couple other auxiliary uh, cables. So this powers the module that goes to the sensor. And this one, I believe, is just for controlling the colors. Uh, I could be wrong about that, but from reading their website instructions, uh, it sounds like you wire this up to the um, your lights, so when you turn it on, it'll change colors. So uh, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm fine with the white. Um, second order of business is you need some way of um, connecting this to your exhaust. The kit does provide this weld-in bung, uh, so definitely you know easy to do. Uh, we have our own welder here, uh, but if you don't have a welder. Uh, you can get something like this. This is a glow shift product. I'm also going to be using a glow shift gauge pod holder in my Mustang. Uh, all this does is makes it so it's a no weld kind of option. What you do is you get your hole saw or your uh, step bit and make it the correct size. They give you a gasket to put in here as well. Uh, and then you just tighten it down. Uh, and very simple so you don't have to. Uh, go ahead and weld or do anything like that. You don't need a welder or don't need to pay for someone to weld it either. Um, this is probably the superior option. It's smaller and uh, less invasive, you know, less chance to rattle or, you know, run into problems. But this is what I'm going to be using. So uh, first step in all this is getting your vehicle up on jack stands. I have two jack stands on the frame rail. I have a uh, floor jack under the main K member, front suspension. And then I have uh, some chocks back there. I do have the e-brake on, so don't really need those, but just want to be safe uh, when doing this. So on my previous video, I ran my uh, oil pressure gauge. You can see that right there. Uh, I probably will be moving it eventually over to this uh, area here, so I can have all my gauge pods in one area. That is the Glow Shift uh, A-pillar gauge pod holder. I have three there, so I'm going to be running my oil pressure. I'm going to be running my wideband O2. Uh, once I get my supercharger installed, I'm going to be running boost. And then fourth one, I'm going to be running intake air temperature. Um, so we are probably going to be mounting the module down in the foot wall over here and then running cable through exactly how I did with the oil pressure sensor. And uh, that comes through here. We'll just have to remove the tire the wheel, uh, inner fender wall, and it's very easy access uh, through that. So I will probably be uh, hooking up to the driver's side exhaust pipe and uh, going from there. All right, so I got the uh, wheel and uh, fender liner off. Uh, you can see in here that red line, that's what's going to my oil uh, pressure sensor. There's a grommet right here that exits right into the uh, driver's cabin footwell. So we're gonna go ahead and poke a hole through there and then feed this line through. This line, the other end, goes to the wideband O2. So I'm pretty much going to try running as many wires as I can before I get under and start drilling and 
Uh, that way it'll be more plug and play once the uh, cables are in place. So I'm going to go ahead and feed that through here. I don't exactly have uh, another person hold the camera, so I might see about fixing it, but uh, basically just going to cut a hole in here and push it through. Alright, uh, might be kind of hard to see, but I ended up uh, taking a little razor blade and cutting a hole in there. The hole that the red wire is going through is a bit too small, so I had to do that. Um, the connector is pretty wide, so just fit it through there. Should be fine. Um, I also tied it to the steering wheel, just so we can't pull it through. There's still tons of excess here, so should be fine to go ahead and proceed now. Um, I'll probably just be routing this uh, pretty much like along the other cable but down and into here. Um, might need to fit it with the fender liner, but uh, yeah, pretty much good access right down here to the exhaust. You can see to the header pipes there, right over there to the X pipe, and I'm going to be uh, going into that right there. So um, I'll work on getting this wrapped now. Alrighty, so um, I'm actually going to be going ahead and drilling the uh, new bung for the O2 sensor now. Um, they say that you need to keep it at a 10 degree angle, so just not much. I mean, you can reference this one kind of for the angle that it needs to be at, just so any kind of condensation on it will drip off. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, drill probably right here. Uh, should be good. And uh, actually, let me go grab my center punch so and the clamp so I can put it out over there. Alright, so just a tiny setback, the uh, X pipe I have is actually two and three quarters inch, and this is only good for two and a half inch. Uh, past the X pipe though, this is two and a half inch. So I'm just going to put it right here. There's a little divot right here where the O2 sensor can sit uh, safely. So I'm going to go ahead and drill on this pipe here. Alright, we have uh, created a big enough hole for the wide band to go into now. So I am going to go ahead and get the gasket on there. And it's got a sticky side, just put it on there over the hole. And then I'm going to get the clamp on. And this gasket will prevent any type of exhaust leaks one's clamped down all the way. Alright, uh, there are still some washers I need to put behind these nuts, uh, but I am just wanted to get it tightened down. I'm going to tighten it all the way down on one, uh, and then on the other one, and uh, get the nut on just so it's properly clamped. Now that I have the uh, new bung on, I'm going to go ahead and get the wide band Put in. It already has anti seize on it, so it's going to make for easy removal in the future. Alright guys, uh, sorry I had to cut that part. I did actually have to loosen it and readjust the clamp just a little bit, just so I can get the O2 sensor in. Now it is completely tightened down, and we're ready to move the wiring over there. There's the wiring that's going into the cabin, so we just need to zip tie and uh, pretty much just meet in the middle, and uh, we should be done with this portion. Alright, so I got the uh, wide band all routed. 
cable comes out, there's actually a little hole right here that I was able to put a zip tie on. Uh, a stud right here. This is pretty secure. It's not going to be coming off. Uh, if it does, it can be addressed. It goes over the X-pipe. Uh, it is not touching it. it. goes over the transmission cross member. It comes out right here. And then the cable from inside connects there. Just zip tied it to the other O2 sensors into the uh, harness clip there. Up onto the support bar, I just put two zip ties up and over into the fender well. Out of the fender well up right here, comes up, goes behind these lines, and then into the grommet. So it's pretty clean, quick line, and there's tons of excess inside the car, so we're gonna go ahead and address that. Also, whenever you're uh, doing any type of car work, it is a good idea to uh, clean up as you go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get everything cleaned up and organized so I can continue with wiring on the inside. And um, now that we're done with the car uh, underside, uh, we should be fine to go ahead and lower it down and get everything wired up. All right, so uh, now that we have all the wideband ran, or the cable ran, uh, we are able to get the fender liner back in, uh, wheel on, and put on the ground. There's nothing else we need to do under the car. Uh, it's pretty much just all inside, so it's fairly simple. Um, we're going to be plugging into the junction box on the passenger side. Uh, what makes these very uh, easy is the fuse box, like I just mentioned. You can get adapters that plug right in there, and uh, that's what I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue with. We just need to wire up the module. We actually need to find a place for the module to sit in there and then uh, get everything wired up. All right, so the next step, uh, I got some uh, wire, ran through the center console over to the over, uh, other side, the fuse box, uh, just like I did with the oil pressure sensor. You can actually see some of my old wires here. That's for the oil pressure sensor. The one above, I believe. Actually, no, it's the one below. It's right there. So uh, that goes into one of the fuses. I just picked a 5 amp fuse um, that was open, and we're going to try running on that. Uh, so that's pretty much all you need to do in there. I will link these wiretaps in the description. Now uh, I got this plugged in. This goes to the O2 sensor. Um, we are definitely going to have to bunch up some of this. I'm probably going to go put it up in the corner right over there and uh, zip tie it just out of the way. And I'll probably just keep the box up there too on the left side up here just for everything to plug into. These are the two wires I just mentioned. They will be splicing into here. So that is the white and red wire going into a butt connector. So it'll just be as simple as that. The orange one can be left alone, and this black one just needs to go to an engine ground, which uh, there's one up there, just where I put the oil pressure sensor. I'll just do the same one. All right, uh, I got everything very crudely wired up. Uh, you can see the box here. It has the power. So two wires going to that fuse box like I mentioned. The black wire off of this is going to this ground right here. It is also sharing the same ground as the oil pressure sensor. Um, I'm going to clean all this up just, as just to show you that it's working and for me to test it as well. Uh, and then it has the line going to the sensor and then the, or the wire going to the sensor and then this is going to the gauge. So I'm going to go ahead and start it up and we can uh, see it working. So power, it's working. Uh, ProSport says it takes 30 seconds for it to start reading once it's fired up. And there we have it. <clears throat> there is uh, my air to fuel uh, ratio. It's running closer to a bit rich. But uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely working. And uh, now that we have it working, I gotta clean up all this wire. And then uh, we can start with installing the uh, gauge pod holder. So the a pillar. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and show you that next. All right, next order of business is getting the gauge pod actually mounted. So as you can see, uh, the cabling is all tucked away. What I have here is the gauge pod uh, holder. This is a glow shift one, it just fits over it. They just got some painter's tape holding it together. Um, just going to see exactly how it's gonna fit where I want the gauge to be. And then I'm going to drill some holes through here, they have some trim pieces that'll hold it together. Um, and then I need to drill a hole for the cabling itself. So uh, just got it kind of crudely set up here. Um, just looking at it, I will probably need to decide where I want it for now. Probably just going to keep it at the very top. Um, or actually I think I'm gonna put it at the bottom. I'm gonna have the intake air temperature sensor here. And then I'll probably have my boost gauge just right up there forefront. So uh, I'm gonna probably install it just like that. 
Um, now all I'm going to have to do is start drilling it to get the trim pieces in and then I'm going to be running the cable here, this cable, up the trim here just like this. I actually already have a speaker wire going up here for my phone. Uh, so it'll just go up in there and uh, pretty easy install uh, with that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started with this and uh, show you once I'm done. Alright, uh, we are just about done uh, with this process. Um, basically when you want to drill on plastic like this, you want to put painter's tape behind it and then drill through. It'll make it very clean. Uh, this pat or this kit came with four of these studs, but I actually ended up breaking one. I did not make the hole big enough. When I put it through and removing it, uh, just broke it. So I put one right there, one right there, and on the other side, one right there. Uh, seemed to hold it on the best. Uh, down the road, I might add more, but uh, it is actually pretty firm, just with the three. Uh, so uh, I also drilled a hole in the back, right there, for the wire to go through, and plugged it in. So now I'm going to go ahead and get this fitted in there, uh, and this wired down to the module. All right, uh, moment of truth. Got everything all set up in here. Basically, the uh, cabling. You can actually kind of see it right there, maybe. Anyways, uh, you can route it down through here, through this piece of trim, just pops off. And I just got it out and around over there into the module. And there we are. The uh, the gauge, like it says, uh, takes about 30 seconds to uh, heat up and start reporting. So that's exactly how long it took. This is actually a pretty neat gauge because it's got this digital light at the top. If it gets too far to the right, that is rich conditions, so pretty much right here, and to the left uh, is lean conditions. You can kind of see a little bit better there. It says rich on the right, lean on the left. Uh, so that's pretty neat. So it's, you're up in optimal, and that's uh, pretty good. The other gauge pod holders are looking a little bit lonely there, but I'm going to be putting those, uh, filling some up in there as well. Uh, the digital gauge is nice. It's a nice LED blue, just same as my oil pressure gauge here. Uh, I do plan on moving this over here, possibly, um, but it is uh, pretty nice. Uh, Pro Sport gauges make really great gauges. Uh, they're easy to read and just uh, really fancy looking. So uh, I'm going to be installing a uh, intake air temperature sensor as well as a boost gauge once I uh, get my supercharger on. So I'll probably buy the gauges and just pop them in there just so there's no uh, uh, just hole there. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this was informative and uh, see you later.